Hello everyone and welcome to Jehu Crochet and More. In today's tutorial I will show you how to make this beautiful sweater top. This top is made by making two granny pentagons and then sewing them together and adding the sleeves. I will show you step by step how to make this top and how you can alter the size to fit any size you want. You can make it with long sleeves, short sleeves, you can make no sleeves at all, you can make it longer, you can have it shorter, and all will be explained during the tutorial. This top is my entry for the season of the granny challenge. And I know I am a bit late with posting this, but I hope that you will enjoy my tutorial anyway. Thank you all very much for watching and let's move on to the materials you're going to need for this project. For this project I'm using Hurricane. It is a 100% acrylic yarn and you can purchase this yarn on the Hobby website but you can use any kind of yarn you want. My yarn is a lightweight 3 and there are 200 grams and 350 meters per cake and I'm using two full cakes of this yarn. But you can use any kind of yarn you want, any fiber, any yarn weight you want as long as you adjust your hook size. I'm using a 4 millimeter crochet hook which is the recommended hook size for this yarn. But as long as you match the hook size with the yarn that you have, if you have a chunkier yarn, use a larger hook. If you have a lighter weight yarn, just use a smaller hook. And as long as they match, it's okay. There is no importance of gauge in this project. And you will see as we work the project along that it can really work with any kind of yarn. So get your materials together and let's begin. We begin this project with a chain of four and then we close it into a circle by slip stitching into the first chain. You can also use the magic ring technique if you prefer that one. To begin we chain five and then we work three double crochets into that circle. And then we're going to chain two. Once again we will work three double crochet into the circle and chain two. And we continue this way until we have four clusters of double crochet. So get your four clusters of double crochets together and I will show you how to continue. So I have my four clusters of double crochets and they are separated by chain two spaces. And then I'm going to chain two one more time. And this time I'm only going to put two double crochets into the circle. And to finish the first round, I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain of my beginning five chains. So when we began this round, we began by chaining five. And those chain five now count as the double crochet and two chains that we need to complete that last cluster. So I'm going to find the top of my third chain and slip stitch into it. Now as you can see I have a pentagon and what we're going to do now will be the same in every row. We begin by slip stitching into the chain 2 space and chain 5. And into the same chain space we work 3 double crochet. Then we work a chain one and we skip to the next chain two space. And into that chain two space we're going to put three double crochet, 
chain two, three double crochet, all into the same space. And that is what we're going to do in each one of the corners. So all along our project, whenever we reach a corner, we're going to work three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochet into that corner. So once we have the corner done, we're going to chain one and skip to the next chain two space. And once again, we're going to work three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into that corner. And we're going to continue this way all the way around for round number two. So I will meet you at the end of round number two and show you how to move on to the next round. I finished working my last corner and I'm going to chain one and jump back into this beginning chain two space where I started with my chain five. Put two more double crochets in there. And to end my round, once again, I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain of my beginning chain. To begin round number three, once again, we first slip stitch into the chain space. We always begin our rounds in the corner. And we always begin our rounds with a chain of five. That chain of five counts as a double crochet and chain two. And we're going to once again put three double crochets into the same chain space. We chain one and in the next chain space, the next one will be a chain one space. And in this space, we put three double crochets. And then we're going to chain one and we're at the corner again. And we're going to work the corner just as we did before, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochet. When we finish our corner, we're going to chain one and work three double crochets into the chain one space. Once again, we're going to chain one and we're at the corner again. So we're going to continue this way all the way around until we get to the end of the round. So continue and finish your round number three and I will meet you at the end to move on to the next round. I'm at the end of round three and I just worked three double crochets into a chain one space and I've chained one and now I'm just going to finish the round by putting two double crochets into the chain two space and slip stitching into the third chain of my beginning chain five. From now on, all the rounds will be the same. So we always begin by slip stitching into the chain space and chaining five. Then we work our sides. In the corners we put three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. In the chain one spaces we put three double crochets and chain one in between. We always going to have five sides to our pentagon and they're always going to be the same length. You continue growing your pentagon until it is big enough so that when you hold the side against your shoulders, one corner is at the tip of one shoulder and the next corner is at the tip of your other shoulder. So the distance between the two corners should be the same as the distance between the two tips of your shoulders. And since the pentagons are going to be the front and back of our sweater, then both pentagons have to be made in the same size. So you finish your first pentagon and you can fasten off and then you have to make your second pentagon exactly the same way and exactly the same size. And once you have two pentagons ready, then come back to the video and I will show you how to proceed. Once you have both of your pentagons ready, you lay them on top of each other with the right side facing out and the wrong sides facing in. So right now, 
both of the wrong sides are facing each other and the right side is facing me and the right side of the back of our sweater is facing the table. And you lay them on top of each other and don't worry if they're not laying flat, that is okay. You must choose which side of the pentagon is going to be the top, what goes over your shoulders. And you can use stitch markers to hold your pentagons together. Now we're going to use two stitch markers to mark where our neck opening is going to be. And that is your decision how big you want it to be. And I recommend that you count those clusters of granny stitch so that you have it the same on both sides. And then just use a stitch marker to mark the opening. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew between the shoulder and the neck opening. Then of course we're not going to sew this part and we're going to sew again between this shoulder and the neck opening again. Afterwards we do the same for the sleeves. So we hold the sides of our pentagon together here in the corners. I have two stitch markers holding them together and then I use the yellow stitch markers to mark where I want my sleeve opening to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew between these two stitch markers and we're going to leave an opening for the sleeve. And the same on the other side. So what I want you to do now is lay both of your pentagons together, mark them the right way as I've showed, and sew in between the stitch markers where it needs to be sewn, leaving it open where it needs to be open. So for both sleeves on both sides and up for the neck. And once you've finished with your sewing, you can use whatever sewing method you prefer. And when you're finished, then come back to the video and I'll show you how to make the sleeves. Once we have our top sewn in every side and on top, then we can continue on to making the sleeves. Now, in this point, if you don't want your top to have sleeves, if you want to keep it sleeveless for summer, for example, then all you have to do is attach your yarn at the armholes and go around and make one row of single crochet on each side. And we will also do the same for the neck opening. So unless you have some plans to make a turtleneck out of it or something else, then you can also go ahead and put one row of single crochets around the top. But if you do want your top to have sleeves like I am doing, then you can continue watching and make it together with me. So get your yarn ready and you can attach it on one of the sides. It doesn't matter what sleeve you do first. And just attach your yarn at the bottom of the armhole and I will meet you to continue on to the sleeves. I have attached my yarn at the bottom of my armhole and I'm going to chain a long chain and that chain is going to be the length of the sleeve. So you have to decide if you want your sleeves to go all the way down to your wrists or if you want them uh, three quarters of a sleeve or all the way to your elbow, it's your decision but you chain as long as you want your sleeve to be. So the number of chains that you chain is as much as you need in order to get the length of the sleeve that you want. So get your chain ready and I will meet you there. Once you have your chain ready, we're gonna go ahead and chain two more and then we're going to work one half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So count three chains from the hook and work half double crochet into that third chain. And now we continue working half double crochets all the way around until we get to the beginning of the chain or the bottom of the armhole of our top. So just continue putting one half double crochet all the way along your chain until you get back to the first chain and I will meet you there to continue to the next step. So I made it all the way back to the beginning and I'm going to put one last half double crochet into the very first chain that I made and now I'm going to slip stitch into the side 
of the armhole. So this is the first chain that I made. This is where I attached my yarn and I'm going to skip one stitch over from where I attached my yarn and I'm going to go into the next stitch. So this is the stitch where I attached my yarn. I'm skipping this one and into the next one I'm going to slip stitch. And now I'm going to turn. So I'm going to turn. So this is the chain I just worked. And now I'm going to work into it from the other side. To begin the row I'm going to chain two and before I'm starting to work back into the chain. Once again, I'm going to slip stitch into the side of the armhole. So I'm going to skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch. So that chain two that I just made to start the row, it is now laying here on top of those two stitches. So actually it is connected to my armhole. And now I'm going to work back into that chain that I made. And I'm going to make one half double crochet into each one of the stitches all the way along just as I did before until I get to the end of the row. So put one double crochet into each one of the stitches from the previous row until you get to the end of the row. And I will meet you at the end of the row to continue. When you get to the end of your row, don't forget to work one last half double crochet into the top of that chain two that we started the last row with. So it's just really important not to miss that one last stitch, otherwise your entire sleeve will be kind of wonky because you'll always miss the last stitch on the row and you'll see that you are getting less and less stitches every row that you make. So just make sure that you worked into that last stitch that was actually the chain two from the previous round. Now once again we will chain two and that will count as our first half double crochet and we will turn and we will work back one half double crochet into each stitch until we get back. Don't forget that this chain two counts as your first half double crochet so you don't work again into the same stitch. You make your first half double crochet into the next one and then you just continue putting one half double crochet into each one of your stitches until you get to the end of the row. Once again I'm at the end of my row and it is important to not forget to work that last half double crochet into the top of the chain two that we made to start the previous row. Now that chain two is connected to the body of our top with the slip stitch that we made. So it's important that you go and find the top of that chain two and work into that even though that slip stitch that we made might be in your way. Once you work that very last stitch, once again we go to the body of our top and we skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the next. And this connects the row that we just made to the body of our top. And now again we will chain two, skip the next stitch on our top and slip stitch into the next one and turn. And now we will continue working one half double crochet into each one of the stitches of our sleeves just as we did before. And we're going to continue this way working half double crochets on the sleeves, turning on the edges and always remembering to attach on the top side. And we're going to do that all the way around the armhole until we get back to the bottom. Once you got all the way back to the bottom and worked your last row, you can sew up the sleeve. And then do the same thing that we did with this sleeve for the sleeve on the other end. Once both of your sleeves are done, you can reattach your yarn at the end of the sleeve and work one row of single crochets around it 
to give this end of the sleeve a nice finish. And once you've done that, then come back to the video and I'll show you how to finish up your top. Once you have your sleeves finished, our top is pretty much done. So as I've said, if you have not done so yet, go ahead and put one row of single crochet around your neck opening, or if you want to make it a turtleneck, then you can just put rows of front post, back post, double crochets all around until you have your turtleneck the height that you want it to be. If you want your top to be longer, then you can attach your yarn at the bottom and just continue working the granny stitch all the way around. And when you get to the two corners, the one that's in the back and the one that's in the front, you continue putting two stitches into the corner. So that's three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets all into the corner. In this way you will maintain the two corners, the one in the front and the one in the back. And other than that, you just go all the way around and make the normal granny stitch. Just remember, don't start increasing in the sides as well. You only do the corner here. If you start putting corners here, the whole shape of your top will alter. So you just go ahead and put regular granny stitches all the way around and make the corners in the front and in the back. So our top is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you found it useful and if you did please give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it with your friends. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel then please hit the subscribe button for many more tutorials, yarn reviews and a lot of yarny chat that I have on my channel. Thank you all very very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!